Hi there, Matt here from Minerva, hope you're well. So today I'm gonna to be looking at this McCall's pattern here, which is a men's and a boy's shirt, shorts and trousers, uh, all in one pattern. Um, so they both have the same pattern number, which is M6972. Um, this is the kids one, this is the adult one. Um, they're both the same pattern, but obviously different sizes. Uh, the adult one is for sizes small, medium, large and extra large. And the kids version is uh, for kids aged three to four, five to six, and seven to eight. So this uh, pattern is designed for beginner sewers, so it should be quite easy to sew together. Um, you have a men's shirt, or the boys version, um, shorts with an elasticated waist, and trousers with an elasticated waist. Let's take a look inside what you get. So obviously you've got the pattern and you've got the instruction booklet. Um, now the instruction booklet is really, really good for anyone who's starting out in sewing because it has lots of tips. Um, let me see, where is it? Here we go. So on here, you tell you what sewing supplies you need, um, all the different pattern markings that are on the pattern um, so you can understand it. Um, also suggests how you can adjust the pattern if um, you need to make it longer or shorter. Um, so lots of useful information on there and of course the instructions on how to sew it together and the instructions uh, are very clear and has some great illustrations on here so hopefully it won't be too confusing for you or for me. Um, so I'm going to be using 100% uh, cotton fabric which is in cadet blue. This is available on Minerva. Um, the product code for this, let me find it, is RH147. So if you search for that, you can find this cotton fabric and it's available in lots of different colours. So you can have a whole wardrobe of different shirts. Um, so I'm going to be doing the large shirt today. Um, large because I've put a little bit of weight on during lockdown. Um, and also I want it a bit looser for the summer. So um, I've already cut the fabric pieces out. Um, and on two of the pieces, you need to add some interfacing. So um, this is the, the facing, which goes along the center front, but on the inside. Um, so I've already put interfacing on these bits here. And also on one piece of the collar, you need to add interfacing as well, just to give it a little bit more structure. So as well as that, you need um, five five eighths of an inch um, buttons. Um, so I've got these here. These are hemline buttons. These are also available on Minerva. Um, along with that, you'll probably need um, some marking tool. So I've got some chalk here. I need to put my markings onto my fabric. So before I cut out my fabric pieces, I've already washed it and ironed it. Um, and also as I cut out, I marked out the notches so I can line up my pattern pieces correctly. So you can just see that there. Maybe if you can see on here, that's better bit clearer there you can see the notch that I cut out and that will line up against an, another pattern piece so make sure I line it up correctly so all my pieces are cut out it's all washed it's all ironed it's all ready to go so let's do it so we start with the pocket piece this is piece number one um, let me take my pins out here now at the top here you can see a line this is a fold line so we need to fold that down so I need to transfer the markings from there so I'm just going to put a line there and a line there. I haven't got a ruler, so I'll just use this. <laughs> Hopefully it's straight. Let me just put a little mark there. So I know where to fold that down. Let me take those pins out there. So we start by pressing this top edge down by six millimeters. Um, so let me bring my pressing mat up here. Um, so I don't burn my desk. Um, got my little iron. So we need to press that down by six millimeters. Let me measure that. About that. So let's press that. And then once you've got that top edge down by six millimeters, turn your pocket over to the right side. Now you can't really tell with whether this is the right side or the wrong side, but this is gonna be my right side. And fold 
down on that fold line there. Just press that in place. Now on this pattern, there's a one and a half centimeter seam allowance already included in the pattern. So you don't need to add um, anything to your pattern pieces. So once that's folded down, you want to sew a line of stitching on the edges down here and down here. So let me go over to my machine. So once you've done that, you need to just trim your seam allowance off here, this corner here and this corner here. Being careful not to cut through the stitching. So once you've trimmed your seam allowance, you want to turn that pocket, those corners like that. And if you have something not too sharp, just poke out those corners. Just make them nice and square. Let's try that one. Just give that top bit another little press there. So on the inside, continue to fold the edges in and fold the bottom up. Now sometimes it's easier if you have um, you can have a cardboard template and you can I haven't measured this correctly but um, in the instructions it uh, offers a tip of making a cardboard template and then you can fold the fabric over onto the uh, cardboard and then you get a nice straight edge. Um, but I haven't cut this out correctly, so <laughs> uh, let me fold that up and show you like that. So once your pocket is all neatly folded and pressed like that, you want to do a line of stitching along that fold there. So over to my machine again. Now I'm using one of my guidelines here on my machine so I get this piece of this stitching nice and straight. So there's my pocket ready to go on to the front piece of my pattern. So I've got my front piece here. Now it says to cut, cut two pieces. So let me just unpin the pattern. Whilst I do this, let me remind you about the Minerva Craft Club. If you sign up, you'll get 10% off all your purchases for a whole year. That is my front piece. Now, before I completely take this off, um, you can see here there are two circles now this is where you're going to line up your pocket. So I need to transfer these markings onto the left side of my, um, my, sh my front piece. So the pattern is face down on the left side. Let me just line that up. These are the two circles. So I just need to place a mark there. and over here, move that out the way. So your markings are here and here. So you need to place the top of your pocket at those markings. So once I've lined that all up, I just want to pin that in place. Make sure that corners tucked away. So once that's pinned in place you want to do a line of stitching very close to this edge, um, probably a couple of millimeters away from the edge all the way around. 
the top to the bottom, along the bottom and back to the top. So when you get to the edge here, put your needle down, lift your foot up and then turn your fabric. And then when you've lined that up again, put your foot down and continue. So there's my pocket in place. Let me just trim threads off there. So that's my pocket in place, looking very smart. So moving on to the next stage, you need to attach the front pieces to the back piece. So let me get my other front piece back. and my back piece. Let me unpin this again. So the back piece is cut on the fold, as you can see here. So once you've done that, you need to place your pieces right sides together. And as you can see, I've cut the notches out here and matching the notch of the front piece to the notch of the back piece so they're lined up correctly. So let me pin that in place. Then I do the same on the other side. So when, when that's pinned in place, you want to sew a line of stitching along the shoulder seam here. So again, you're using a one and a half centimeter seam allowance. So that's this mark here. Place that in there. So that's our front and back pieces sewn together. I'm just going to trim off some of these threads here. So it's starting to look like a shirt now. The so next stage, the sleeves. So I have my sleeve piece here. Um, again, as you can see, let me move that out of the way. Uh, I have some more notches here so I can match up these on the main body of the shirt. Let me just unpin the pattern. So on the arm hole here, I have two notches on the back piece and one notch on the front piece. And on the sleeve, I have two notches here and I forgot to mark the one notch here. <laughs> so I shall just put a little chalk mark there so I can see where I need to line that up. It's going to mark that. I mean, rather than cutting the notches out, you can just mark it with chalk maybe instead. Um, and if you forget, like I do, you can just mark it with some chalk. So that's marked on there. So I need to match these notches up in the armhole, right sides together, going all the way around. And then we'll sew a line of stitching along there. Let me pin that in place first. So whilst I'm pinning this, I'll remind you again to sign up to the Minerva Craft Club. You'll get a 10% discount all year whilst you're a member, which comes in very handy uh, if you're doing a lot of sewing. And I do do a lot of sewing. And receiving 10% off really does help. So sign up to that match up my other notch here 
and because this is on a curve you kind of need to ease it in a bit so that's all pinned in that's all pinned in there so now we need to we'll sew a line of stitching all the way around the sleeve top there okay so again one and a half centimeter seam allowance it's about there I just take your time over this because sometimes it is a bit tricky going around these curves and keeping your fabric flat. So that's the sleeve put in. Um, now on the instructions it says to sew another line of stitching about six millimeters from that first line of stitching into the seam allowance. So along here. Um, so I'll just do that. So that's my second line of stitching in place. So you just want to trim these the seam allowance here close to this second line of stitching that I've done. Be careful not to cut into your stitching. that into the bin or the floor and then do the other side trim that seam allowance there along that second line of stitching that you've done make sure you're careful and you don't cut through your stitching I know a lot of people don't like doing sleeves they're a bit of a pain sometimes. <laughs> but these have gone in quite easy. Okay, so that's my seam allowance trimmed. Now I just need to press that. Um, now if you have a tailor's ham, one of these, available on Minerva, um, it would be easier to go around the, the curve of that sleeve. So you want to press that towards the sleeve so let me bring it here. So you want to press your seam allowance towards your sleeve, so here. Sometimes you need to adjust it a little bit to get right into that curve. Let me just turn it over and do it a little bit of a pressing on the outside as well okay and try and do the other side where's the other side there we are again you want to press that towards towards the sleeve. The secret to a, a nice finish is pressing it. So make sure you, you do take time over this and you press it correctly. There we go. So once your sleeve is in, you want to sew the side seam all the way around under the arm and along the sleeve. So let me show you. Move that out of the way. So right sides together, place your front and back matching at the notches that you remembered to mark. So I'm gonna pin there. Place the pin there. And then you want to match the seam at the sleeve so I'm just gonna pop a pin in there as well 
and then you have a notch on the sleeve that you want to match up so I'll pop pop a pin in there and then once once I've matched all that up I'll just pin the end of the sleeve and along the side seam here so what we're going to do here is going to is we're going to so one long length of stitching we're going to start at the end of the sleeve go all the way around through the underarm and then along the side seam here and then once we've done that I'm going to stitch again under the arm just to reinforce that because there's going to be probably some stress there which we want to reinforce so let me come over to here again so one and a half and then go all the way down that side so that's the other side done um, now you just want to although it doesn't say in the instructions just want to press the seams open on the side and at the top there so I'll get my ironing mat out again and just press that seam open along the side seam there now of course you can finish it maybe with a if you don't want to just press it open you could just sew a zigzag stitch along the two raw edges there so you don't fray and just to tidy up a little bit if you do want to do a zigzag if you've got uh, an overlocker then you can overlock the edges just to tidy it up a little bit on the inside right so that's the side seams done we now need to come and hem the sleeve I'm going to hem my sleeve slightly different to how the instructions tell me um, I never follow the rules but um, I find this method a little bit easier um, if you want to follow the instructions that's fine so on the instructions it's telling you to fold up three centimeters which is roughly three centimeters based along this edge and then fold that down and sew along the outside there I'm going to do it a slightly different way I'm going to fold that up about a centimeter then I'm going to press that edge and then I'm going to fold it up again three centimeters trying to get it even so that's about yep yeah, that's three centimeters so fold it over one centimeter and then fold it up again three centimeters make sure that's three centimeters all the way around now I'm going to press that again now you can pin that in place or leave it like that what I'm going to do so a line of stitching along this folded edge here now for this you might want to take the arm off your sewing machine if you can so take that off there and then it makes it easier to slip your sleeve in here there we go and so you want to sew about three millimeters from that edge I'm going to start from the underarm here let me move that around so I'm gonna go three or four millimeters in from that folded edge there back stitch there and then trim your threads 
Oops. There we go. So when you pull it out the right way, you've got your sleeve hemmed. Just give that a, another press. And that's your sleeves all done. And now we move on to the collar. So moving on to the collar, and before we actually get onto the collar, you need to stay stitch around the collar edge on your main body of the shirt. So this will prevent any stretching of the neckline as you attach the collar. So if you're good like me and you've marked where you start and end your stay stitching, so there's a circle on the pattern, and just place the mark onto your front pieces so you'll be sewing from here all the way around the neck edge to the other mark. The mark is a circle, so just copy that off onto here. So I'll do that now. Go all the way around to your other mark. So there's your stay stitch around the edge of your neckline. So once you've stay stitched that, you need your collar pieces. So I have one collar piece, two collar pieces. Um, so one collar piece is interfaced, the other one is not. Um, and also you need to mark on here your triangle. So if you can see on the pattern here, this is piece five. Um, you have these triangles here. So um, I have placed a little mark on here. Let me mark it again. So just to reinforce the collar, we are going to sew a line of stitching just where that um, triangle is. And again on this side. So there. And then we're going to clip up to where the uh, the triangles are. So let me do that. This is only on the interface piece. So we've just stitched, you just want to clip up to there. Try not to go through your stitching. And then turn that down one and a half centimeters. Check which is your seam allowance, which, yeah, that's correct, and press that down. So, let me get that in down here. So, you just want to press that down one and a half centimeters, once that's pressed down, you want to trim that to one centimeter. So, I'm making approximate guess as to what one centimeter is. I think that's one centimeter. Let me measure that. Bang on, look at that. So let me move this out of the way. So then you want to grab your other collar piece and right sides together place the interface piece on top and then pin that in place. So, so pin that in place and what you need to do is sew a line of stitching from here down to the point, along here to that point and up there. Leave this notched edge um, free. Um, you don't want to sew there. So just down there, along there, and up there. One and a half centimeter seam allowance. So first we'll go down to this point of the collar here. Now we want to put the needle down. So I'm guessing that's about a centimeter half, hopefully. And then we turn collar around and then we continue take that pin out continue down this 
long edge here. So right down, I'll tell you about one and a half centimeters from that edge. Put your needle down, lift your foot, spin it around, take that pin out, and then so right down to that edge. Do a reverse stitch. And then trim here. So there's your collar pieces attached. Now you just want to trim this seam allowance close to um, that line of stitching you've just done. Try not to cut through the stitching, obviously. Um, but try and get as close as you can because you don't want too much bulk when you come to turn it the right side out. Okay, and then down there. So let me get rid of these bits here. And now you want to turn the collar out to the right side. Now, if you have a knitting needle or a, ch a chopstick or something, but I use, I have a, a sewing gauge like this. And I've only discovered this recently. The pointy bit you can use to push out the corners of your collar. I never knew that was what it was for. Push out your corners. It's always good to have nice sharp corners in your collar. And try the other, do the other edge as well. Try not to go through the corner. So you have to be a little bit gentle on this. So, get my pressing mat out, or my ironing mat. And give that a press. All the way down. So there we go. So that's to the other side as well. Let me just press there. So that's your collar done. Um, so grab your shirt, and we are now going to attach the collar to the shirt. So, of course, you've marked out all your notches on your collar um, and on the shirt neck. Now, I forgot to do it on my shirt neck, so I've marked it on here with a bit of tailor's chalk. So, you want the uninterfaced collar piece um, to match up to your notches. So, I'm going to pin that in place there. One of the notches, and then pin the other notch where's my mark there pin that bit to there and then pin the rest of the collar in place uh, easing it in So that's pinned in place. So that is your uninterfaced collar piece attached to your shirt. Um, the interface bit, the one where you clipped it and folded it in, that's on the outside. So that's hanging loose and the other side is pinned into the shirt. So we just want to baste this in place. So that's the collar attached to your shirt. Uh, now we come on to the front facings. So let me grab those bits. 
Um, now these have already been interfaced. So we need to stay stitch about 1.3 centimeters from this edge here, all the way down to where we've marked where the circle is on the pattern. And again, on the other, the other piece from here, all the way down. So once you've stay stitched that, um, you want to finish this long edge here because that would be on the inside and you don't want that all fraying. So there's various methods that are mentioned in the instructions. So you can fold it over and then fold it over again and then do a line of stitching. Or you can do a zigzag stitch all the way along. Or if you have an overlocker, then you can overlock the edge. Uh, I have an overlocker, but not here. Um, so I'm just gonna zigzag along this edge. So there you go. So those are both uh, zigzag stitched along that long edge there. So next you need to um, press under shoulder edge here uh, by one and a half centimeters. Let me ooh, grab that one. So we need to press this under by one and a half centimeters. Let me get my tape measure. So one and a half, about there. And then the other one as well. One and a half. So once that is pressed, go back to your shirt and right sides together. Let me move these pieces over there. So you can see, so matching that notch down here, pin that in place. And then I'll place a couple of pins towards the bottom as well. Pin it in place up here. Pin that all the way along that edge, keeping all the collar pieces together and the back piece. There's quite a few layers here. So your front facing should meet up to that bit that you folded under there. Make sure all of that is pinned nicely. Or I think that's about four layers there. You got your two collar pieces, you have your front facing and you have your front piece. So all that's pinned together, all the way along the neckline there and down the front. So from here, from where you've pressed the edge of the front facing, all the way down to the bottom of the shirt, to the hem, uh, you want to do a line of stitching. So come over here again. So we're doing again one centimeter and a half seam allowance. So that's your front facing facings put on. So we just want to clip the up to that line of stitching. Try not to go through the line of stitching. And along there. and on the other side as well. Trim the seam allowance as well, so you don't get any bulk.
trim around here as well. Trim all your seam allowances. There is a lot of fabric around the collar edge, so you don't want all that bulk there when you come to turn it. So clip that away. Do the same on the other side. And then it's time to, to turn it and hopefully, if I've sewn it correctly, it will look okay. <laughs> Moment of truth. So we turn this the right way. How does that look? I think that's how it should look. So again, use your little pointy tool and poke out that corner there. Turn that to the inside. And then turn your collar piece here. That hasn't turned out too badly. I'm quite happy with that. Let me just poke out my corner and then give it a bit of a press. Press the collar as well. Let's press this bit up here. And then turn this bit here as well. So, also, you might want to clip across when you turn it out, it's nice and pointy. So, let's turn this through. Get my little tool to poke that corner out. There we go. And then turn the facing to the inside. There we go. And then obviously uh, another press on this side as well. Press that down. So now that we've turned the facing the correct way around, we need to tidy up the collar and where the facing is. So the facing, the turn of the facing is slip stitched to the shoulder seam and the collar, the raw edges of the collar there are tucked under the folded edge of the collar and that again is slip stitched along here. So that's the top of the collar finished. Don't look too close at my, my hand stitching, it's uh, not perfect. Um, so we move on to the hem now. Now, I have to admit, I jumped ahead myself and I forgot to record a little bit here. So I'll try to explain what I've done. <laughs> so on the front facing, you need to turn it to the front so it's right sides together. Um, and then stitch a line of stitching uh, three centimeters up from the bottom uh, along to this edge here. Uh, and then cut the seam allowance out there. And uh, sorry, I forgot to record that bit but it's quite easy to do. So you do that to both of the sides, both of the front facings. And then I'm gonna do my own way of hemming. Uh, I'm not keen on the instructions. So I'm gonna hem the same way as I've done the, the sleeve. So I'm gonna press this edge up by one centimeter and then up again by two centimeters and then do a line of stitching along that seam there. So let me press that up by one centimetre first. Okay, and then press up about two centimetres.
So measure as you go. Make sure your hem is even. Don't want a wonky hem. Okay, so if you like, just pin that in place. Okay, so once that's pinned in place, um, on the outside, you want to run a line of stitching, probably just under two centimeters there, so it catch the top of that um, folded edge there. So where's my two centimeter mark? So there. So I'm just going to go slightly less than two centimeters. So that's the hem all done. Um, that's caught it on the inside there. So it's all nice and neat. Um, just give that a bit of a press. And then we'll move on to button hose. So now we come on to the button hose and you need to transfer the markings from your pattern onto your shirt. So the markings are here and the buttonhole markings are like a, a capital I on the side. So mark those off onto the left side of your shirt. Oh, and by the way, the cross, that's where your buttons go. So we mark them onto the other side. Uh, we'll come to that in a minute. Um, so once these are marked on here, you know where your buttonholes are going to be. And now most machines have um, a buttonhole foot like this. So this bit is adjustable. So you put your button in here. Let me open my buttons. Now these buttons are available on Minerva. Let me place one of those buttons in to this foot. Push it down and then attach it to your machine. So I'll take that foot off. Let me raise that one and attach that one to there. And I just want to thread that the needle thread through the hole there. Just need to push this bit down and select buttonhole on your machine and it's ready to go. Now I always recommend that you test out the buttonhole beforehand. Um, so you make sure it uh, it works correctly. So I'm going to just take another bit of material. Let me cut a piece of that off. And we'll just test the buttonhole on there. So let's see if it works. Okay. And there we go. That seemed to work. Okay. I don't know if you can see that. But there's your button hole. You might want to go over twice just to reinforce it a little bit more. But uh, that seems to be working okay. So I'm happy with that. So I'll continue. So when I put the shirt into the machine, I want to line up the needle to where I've made a cross here. So right in the point there. I want to put a needle there. So let's go. Always makes me a bit nervous doing buttonholes, but let's see. So bring your fabric, your shirt in there. Now I want to line up my needle to where that, the two points cross. Let me note a bit further. There we go. Put my needle down and press start on my machine. And I'm just guiding the fabric. I'm not pulling it, I'm not pushing it. I'm just guiding it. There we go, first one done. Now move on to the second one.
again line up at that point press start and there we go all five buttonholes done now we just need to open them up bring my, my shirt over here get rid of that first I'm going to trim off all these threads that are hanging about okay so to open them up you'll need your seam ripper and a pin uh, the pin is used um, as a safety caution really um, place the pin right at the end of your button hoe if I can get it through there we are so the pin will prevent you from going any further than the button hoe so you don't rip all the way through your shirt you don't want to do that so um, just take your seam ripper and slowly open up your button hoe until you get to the end and do that for all of your button hose. So all the button hose are now open. Now you might have some stray threads here. So you might want to tidy them up a little bit. Um, but your button hose are done. So you just need to put your buttons on now. So on the other side, you need to mark where your buttons are going to go. So on your pattern, you have where the buttonhole markings are, you have a cross, and that cross signifies where you're going to place your button. So mark onto your right side where your buttons are going to go. Now you can either hand sew them or, like I like to do, use my machine. You might have a button foot like this. So it holds the button in place and it sews your button for you, and I love it. So let's do that. Now to use a button foot, you need to disengage your feed dog on the machine, which I'm not sure if all machines do that, but it stops the machine pulling the material through. Um, so let me put that back on there and then place my button foot, clip that in. There we go. I need to put it on a zigzag stitch as well. So I place the shirt underneath at that point and my button on that mark, foot down. Now I need to line up the needle through one of the holes on the button and then hopefully it should go down on the other side. No, I need to adjust the width of my stitch. So let me, there, that goes in there. Okay, so now if I press go, I just sew my button on. Then I just move it a little bit forward. Make sure it's lined up correctly. And then go again. Now do that with all my buttons. Right, so that's all my buttons on there. So hopefully they're in the right place. Just gonna trim off these threads. And hopefully these will line up nicely with my button hose. Let's have a look. I think it looks okay. Uh -huh. And there we go. How's that look? Not too bad. So one shirt, one summer shirt, all ready for the sun, for holiday. I can't wait. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that little tutorial. Um, if you have any comments, please leave them below. Um, don't forget to join Minerva and uh, enjoy sewing. I'm going to go and try this on, give it a press and uh, enjoy a cocktail, I think. Thank you.
chest.